so for, for opening up the action panel you can make sure that the particular uh, frame on which the action is applied is selected and then hit f9 on the keyboard it's a toggle key so hitting f9 back again is going to switch it off as well okay so if i test the movie right now it's stopped as good as it was earlier before we animated the mask but we need to you know assign this particular button a property i'm just going to hide this mask for a while so that we can see this home button and i can also select it it's selected now we need to give it an action which tells it to reveal the mask or animate the mask when the user you know touches the button when the cursor goes on top of the home button so let's do that and for doing that we need to make sure that the home is selected we'll go to the code snippets and under action script there is a section where it says event handlers so you need to expand the event handlers and basically these are the event handlers which lets you interact with the cursor so mouse click event is there we are not looking for that we are looking for mouse over event so we'll double click on it and it says that let's just go through this uh, this warning box it says the selected symbol requires an instance name animate will create an instance name before applying the code sample yeah adobe animate is extending a courtesy that it will give an instance name on its own and i don't want it to you know do that for me because it's not a good habit so rather what i'll do I'll make sure that the button is selected and look in the properties panel. It says instance name here in the very top section and we need to define an instance name here. So what I'll do, I'll say home underscore btn. Now you can also live without this underscore btn thing, but it's a good habit. Okay, that way I'll always be knowing whenever I have a look at the action script panel, what are the symbols which are button, what are the symbols which are movie clip okay so home underscore btn for buttons and if it is a movie clip then i would give it a suffix of underscore mc okay so home underscore btn hit enter go back to the code snippets and once again double click on mouse over event make sure the playhead is on the first frame and then double click on the script it again gives you some commented out text i would encourage you to read what is uh, there in the commented out text okay and basically commented out text is not the part of the script this is a block comment which you know starts with a forward slash and asterisk and ends with an asterisk and backward slash uh, forward slash only and this is single line comment which starts with a double forward slash so even if i you know remove this grayed out text it wouldn't make any difference in the execution of the command it is just there for our understanding that this particular script is going to perform a certain task so basically i'll very quickly you know expand the syntax utilized here okay i'm not going to go into very detail of the action scripting right now but it is very important to understand it so i'll just keep it as brief as possible what it says home underscore btn is listening to an event add event listener and the type of the event is mouse event and specifically it will work with mouse over method okay and uh, performs a function when this criteria is met home underscore btn is listening to an event and the type of the event is mouse event and specifically it listens to the mouse over method and performs an uh, performs a function now this function is defined below that function the same name is utilized here and the function is also a event which is mouse event and returns no value void of course it's not going to return any value and it's going to trace moused over okay so if i test my movie right now if i hover on top of it in the out pan output panel it will generate the text and write mouse over so every time i hover my cursor on top of it it's going to show mouse over and that is how we understand the button is functioning well no issues let's go back to the timeline go back to the first frame and go to the action panel and here i don't want it to trace anything basically what i want it to do actually is to play the timeline play the current timeline so i'll just need to write play 
open and close parenthesis and end it with a semicolon now what this command does like the command stop stops the timeline where it is given this play command plays the timeline the current timeline so whenever the user hovers on top of this button the timeline will start playing and the timeline happens to be at the first frame here at this point of time so it will start playing and if it starts playing let's, let me lock it the mask is only visible when it is both the layers are locked actually so if it starts playing this is what I should expect so let's you know test the movie and again I'm telling you we will again end up having some trouble and we will sort that trouble as we go along the process so control enter if I hover on top of it the animation will play but this is not stopping where I want it to stop after it plays it starts it plays till that point it's fine but what actually is happening flash has a tendency of looping its timeline so when the cursor reaches on top of this it starts with the first frame goes till the last frame and then again loops back and then reads that stop command and it stops here this is not what I want I want it to stop at the last frame right this is what I want so what I'll do I'll break this keyframe into a separate blank keyframe by hitting F7 on the keyboard okay now this span is discontinued on the 14th frame and on the 15th frame I have a separate blank keyframe and here I'm going to go with a script which tells the timeline to stop so stop at this frame let's close it so here I have given just the stop command so it should behave also in the similar fashion let's test the movie now the animation plays and stops at the last frame and gives us access to the buttons now there is a problem you know the third problem here is it expands and this is fine but if I go out of it it's not retracting back it's not resetting it back to the first frame now if I once again go to the home button it will retract now let's understand what is happening here okay so let's understand what is happening here okay fine so right now the timeline is on the first frame I'll switch it back to the first frame the moment my cursor goes on top of this it starts playing from here and stops here because there is a stop command there now if again I hover on top of it what command have we given on this is to play the current timeline the moment I hover on top of it once again it plays from here goes back to the first frame resets everything back and then stop at the first frame now this is the problem we have at hand and this is not how we want it to function if I go out from here it should retract on its own that's the case so what we will do here we will you know use a cheat we will make an invisible button surrounding this entire set of buttons an invisible button and the moment my cursor touches that button it should reset the timeline back to the first frame and our job will be done so let's do that I'll unlock this so that we can see all of it I'll hide the mask for the time being and we are going to create an invisible button surrounding all of it now for doing that we'll make that button above the mask layer so we'll select the mask layer and click on this new icon here new layer and here we are going to make a rectangle which surrounds all the buttons okay and let's get rid of the outline now we are going to change the color of this to a different color and we are also going to switch all of it to outline mode so that we can see the area where the button is all right so for switching to outline mode you can click on this layer uh, this icon here in the layers panel okay now I'll click on this rectangle once again I have changed the fill color and I'm going to make a rectangle which is slightly bigger than the rectangle we have okay this is exactly the same size 
off all the buttons like this, you know so if I switch back to the normal mod you'll understand what I'm doing here I'll, I'll just get rid of the outline quickly so we have two rectangles and the way objects interact the vector objects in, interact in flash is if they have a contrasting color or if they have a different color and they are placed on top of each other in a single layer we can basically select and then you know move out the the the, the color which is in contrast with the this is how vector objects interact in flash basically so um, i'm not you know going to go into detail into that you do that and you'll understand it on your own and uh, if you are l having a look at this tutorial i'm sure you you know already what happened here so i'll just delete this here and i have this rectangle encompassing all the buttons and we need to convert this into a button this rectangle this hollow rectangle so we'll select it and say F8 on the keyboard and uh, let's give it a name retract and change it into a button say ok and here we are going to utilize the hit stage of the button let's first script it so uh, we will select the button ok go to the code snippets and what I want it to do is to basically associate itself with a mouse over event oh before we need to give it an instance name we forgot that so let's click here and retract underscore dtn double click on it flash automatically writes the script for us and basically here we want to change the statement from trace to go to and with capital a play with capital b and when it turns blue you will know that you have typed it right so go to and no sorry not play go to and stop with capital s and inside the parenthesis we will type one which is the frame number where i want it to go and stop so basically retract button listens to an event that event is mouse over event and performs this function which tells the timeline to go to and stop at first frame perfect so let's test the movie and then see it for ourselves whether it is working or not so if i go here the drop down menu plays fine i can access all the buttons and if i go out the cursor is going to touch no matter from which direction i am going out the cursor is going to touch it and it will retract back the only problem here at hand is making this invisible and we can do it very simply just by going inside the button and dragging this up stage all the way down to the hit stage so hit basically defines the threshold of the button but is not a visible state so let's come back and hit is represented by this turquoise blue color here which symbolizes transparency in flash so if i say control enter we will not see that blue bounding box around the navigation we have built and we can access all the buttons and we can come out of it exactly how i wanted exactly what we wanted it to be and as i promised in the beginning of the tutorial now you know how to make a drop down navigation let's go back to the scene one and see what we have done and i can place it anywhere in my navigation anywhere I want and it will work just fine alright so that would be all for this tutorial thank you very much for sticking till the end of this video and I hope you have really learned something here and uh, do me a favor please like the video if you find it nice and subscribe thank you so much